Hi everyone, my name is Arthur and today I would like to show you how you can store attributes of your NFTs completely on-chain. So I have here a regular ERC721, um, so it's a standard for NFTs. Uh, you can also use the technique from this video in any other smart contracts and as well you can use that for ERC1155, which I covered with in some of my previous videos on uh, this channel. So the goal here is um, to uh, mint some sword NFTs and hold all the attributes like defense, attack, image, um, speed completely on chain. So we will not use any external um, hosting like IPFS or uh, AWS or whatever. Uh, we will just compute the um, meta file of this NFT token completely on our smart contract level. I think I think it's super useful if you would like to build some applications or games that are completely on-chain and they are not relying on any external hosting uh, providers. Uh, please be aware that such smart contracts always uh, have a um, bit more, uh, they are just more expensive because you are storing more data uh, on-chain. Of course, it's, it's not useful for all kind of NFTs and all kind of uh, smart contracts. However, I'm still still think that there are a lot of use cases where would you like to keep um, the attributes of the certain NFT completely on chain. So here we have the function called mint and we can call it only if we are the owners. Uh, and right now nothing um, interesting happens. We just have the safe mint and we can mint our token and send it to the certain address. So let's uh, right now customize our smart contract a bit. Um, so so first of all, uh, maybe uh, I will add some attributes to the minting function. So we will take the name, uh, material, speed, attack and defense. So we can specify these informations about uh, our sword that we want to mint. And here I have the array which would be called attributes and it will hold information about each token and I will put all these parameters into the nice structure. So um, whenever you want to use um, structure, you have to just type struct keyword and then you can provide what contains the certain uh, structure inside. So here we have uh, strings and some uh, integers. Of course, if you would like to build some more complex structure, there's no problem with that. You can use here uh, some arrays uh, or any other types that are built in into the solidity. Uh, then as a homework for you, you can also keep track of the taken names of the swords uh, that are already minted with this token. Uh, I will not cover that uh, in this uh, video, but here I will have the public variable on which I will hold information about all uh, minted swords. So we have um, the mapping and the index of uh, the map would be uh, the token ID uh, and then um, the value would be just the structure uh, of these attributes so we can easily check what kind of attributes each sort has. So um, we're gonna need also some more information because right now we are just minting uh, the token and we are storing this information on chain. However, it would be also um, super interesting to generate on the fly metadata structure that is recognized uh, by OpenSea because here we can provide information like the name, images, and uh, here we have also image data data in which we can um, just include the SVG image that is generated on the fly. I think it's super interesting if you would like to build something art related or you would like just to programmatically generate your um, NFTs. Uh, and of course, you have a bunch of other stuff like YouTube URL, animation URL and many other things. Uh, and one more thing that is interesting is attributes because uh, here you can have the attributes like personality and you can also um, provide here some values. And of course, I think this is uh, super important for our sword collection because we also want to include some information about the sword. So sword has some attack, defense and speed. And we would like also to show that information on uh, 
on our um, OpenSea collection. So how to do it? We have to customize a bit our smart contract, not only that we are storing information about each token, but we are also able um, to compute how uh, the meta data file looks like. So um, for that, we're going to use the base64 uh, library. I found it somewhere uh, on the internet, just type the base64 um, solidity. And here we have the um, algorithm that lets us um, basically encode any uh, bytes uh, into base64. This is something that we need. So I just included this code here in this smart contract. If you would like to check um, the code of this smart contract yourself, just go to the description to this video and I have there the links and you can just uh, see how uh, this code works and just, just go to my GitHub and you will find it there. So we have this uh, function for base64. Uh, and also, uh, I will um, add here to this smart contract another function, which let us um, basically change uh, the number uh, into the string. I think this is quite important. If we want to build uh, the JSON, you will see in the moment, uh, then actually we need um, to have also the function that lets us uh, convert um, the number into the string. So I also included this function. I found it on the Stack Overflow, where like most developers, I just uh, search for the term uh, how to convert a string to number and then on the Stack Overflow I found this um, beautiful piece of code that just works. And now uh, we can build our JSON um, so it's generated by Solidity code. And for that, we're gonna first of all need the function get SVG, and this would just return the SVG. I have here just the SVG vector from um, some page SVG viewer. I just copied it over and uh, just place it here inside the string. However, uh, you must know that um, the, the SVGs are super nice because you can uh, programmatically generate the colors or the shape of this uh, SVG. You can even put here some items, um, other SVGs depending on the attributes of uh, the token. So here is a very simplified get SVG function that just returns the sort no matter what the attributes are. Are. However, you can just extend this code and for instance, fetch here the speed or material and depends on the material, you can for instance, change the code um, and for instance, the color of the sort. There's no problem with that, but I will not cover in this video because I want to keep this video today short. And um, I think the code is pretty straightforward. So you can just customize it yourself. So we have the get SVG function. And now we can go also to the function called token URI. And this token URI will return the base64 encoded JSON. So you can see that we have here the ABI encoded pact. So it's function that just uh, combines strings. So we have the string data application JSON base64, and we can combine it with the JSON. And here we are calculating this JSON and we are encoding it with the base64. So we just don't have uh, any problems with the special characters that are inside the JSON. And here we are um, just building this JSON app. So um, I will just copy it over here. Um, so you can see um, that we have uh, all the information like name and the name is taken from uh, our array from our mapping on which we are holding information about each token. So here we also have the token name, uh, here we are fetching the image data, and all attributes like trade type and attack defense material and so on. It's quite um, uh, the, the syntax maybe is not, you know, super great, um, but but you can trust me that this just combines this um, into the string that represents the JSON, uh, and then we are just encoding it with the base64. Um, here we have um, some error, I think. And here also we have to just close the attributes um, array. So let's uh, maybe save this file and let's see how um, this would work uh, right now if we just um, deploy it to the JavaScript uh, virtual machine. So I will select the here the sort NFT and I will deploy it. Um, and here, for instance, right now, you can see that we have a bunch of functions um, related to this NFT. So for instance, we have the name, the name is sort, the owner, this is the address of uh, the minter of this contract, and I can copy this address and let's mint uh, the first uh, sort. So it would be assigned to my address, we're gonna give the token ID one, and we can call this sort Excalibur. 
like from the King's Arthur um, movie or book. And here we have the material which we can specify, for instance, um, steel and for instance, speed might be uh, 45, attack might be 56 and defense can be 20 to something like that. So uh, let's transact and let's see uh, if the um, actually um, the NFT is minted. Here we can uh, check the attributes of our sort just by providing um, the token ID. And here you can see that uh, we have our now a um, really nice structure that contains information about our um, token. So it's Excalibur, Material, Steel, Speed, Attack, Defense. So we have all information here. However, let's uh, validate how the token URI works. So we have the token URI here. We can just call this function. Uh, we have to wait a bit, of course, um, because um, the Remix ID has to compute this JSON and Base64 thing, which is uh, not so uh, easy task for the Remix ID. And now you can see that we have here this string that contains um, the really long and weird string. We can just copy it. And here I have the base64 decode um, application. Uh, and here you can see that we can just omit this uh, first um, letters. And if we just go with the decode, we have here the JSON, which now we can just paste into the um, JSON formatter or validator. So it's another online tool. Uh, in which I can just copy this stuff and we can process it. And now we can see that we have actually the valid JSON. Uh, as you can see, uh, my Mac <laughs> already started heating. Uh, it was too much for him. Uh, so uh, here we have um, the JSON, which is the Excalibur. It contains image data and the attributes array, which contains all the attributes like speed, attack, defense, material. Um, so maybe uh, it's a perfect moment to just uh, deploy the very same smart contract, but now we're going to deploy it to the ring. So I have the Ringby network set up here in my MetaMask. Um, so I will just deploy this um, code to the Ringby so we can test the OpenSea collection ourselves. So I will hit, click here deploy and then we are asked to deploy the contract. We can confirm, of course, it will take some gas to deploy um, such a big contract. Um, and in the minute, we should see the deployed contract here. Um, and then we can just uh, try it out and we will mint an Excalibur sword uh, again. And we will check how OpenSea recognizes um, this uh, NFT. So we have the contract and I will mint it again. So this time I uh, have to copy over my um, address. I will copy it here. The token ID is again one. Uh, the name is Excalibur and the material is steel. Um, so the speed is, uh, I don't know, 51, 55. Attack is uh, 66. Uh, defiance is 12, uh, 22. Um, so we can mint um, this uh, sort. Of course, we are asked uh, um, but this time we are not deploying the contract. We are just uh, asked uh, about um, some integration with the contract uh, so we can confirm. Um, and in the minute, we should see that the sort is actually minted. Um, then we can mint another um, sort. So maybe this time it would be uh, Poison Dodger. Um, maybe some of you guys remember from Tibia, quite nice uh, game. So a Poison Dodger material, let's Let's keep it still uh, speed it might be uh, faster so it would be 89 and the attack may be less so it would be something like 32 and defense can be uh, five so let's um, um, oh yeah, the token is already minted. Uh, of course, we should change the token ID. Um, so it would be the ID um, two. Um, so MetaMask will ask me about this. Um, we can confirm the transaction and here we can uh, see the attributes of each NFT. So for instance, we have the attributes um, for the first one are the Excalibur and we can also see how this works for um, other sorts. Oh, it's not yet minted. Um, so let's wait a second. Okay, it's minted now. So we have the point. Now we can head over to my OpenSea test account and you can see that we have here four uh, Dodgers. So we can go uh, here to the Excalibur and here you can see uh, that we have the sword which is called uh, Excalibur and it has attack, defense, speed. 
um, we have some information about the sword and you can see if we go to this uh, collection we also have here the poison dagger and we also have other uh, here some properties like steel or the level and here we have the defense so um, that's it for today uh, you learned uh, how you can store um, the metadata about your nfts completely on chain so you can uh, generate um, your svgs uh, even inside the solidity or you can just go um, and uh, specify some attributes of course here um, the minting functionality that i offered is only for the owner and i'm not checking the name material speed attack and defense however you can add here some validations you can use some um, uh, random number uh, generation to uh, randomize the speed attack defense you can even pre-mint uh, before all the items with proper names materials and speed so you have a lot of um, possibilities here and you can generate a lot of items uh, that can have everything on chain which uh, means that nft like that will live forever on the chain and it's not depending on any external solutions like ipfs uh, aws um, your centralized server no no matter um, what you will decide to choose uh, this lives uh, inside uh, the chain so if you like the video hit uh, the like button if you have some questions feel free to ask them anytime in the comment section i would like also invite you to my discord channel to which you can find uh, the link in the description down below now thank you for your time and see you on this channel